Hello students, we're going to talk about how you can potentially um, integrate different scenes of A-Frame into some of your 2D projects. So um, this is going to be one of your resources, this embedded page. This looks great and it's working really great on this page and I found a couple projects where it's working really great, but I've just spent like an hour of my life fucking with this relatively simple situation. Um, and it's validating, but none of my components show up. So, um, I can't figure it out. Maybe y'all will be able to figure it out. Um, I'll also link a couple other projects that I found, but I'm not able to get it to running glitch or when I download it. So we're going to, I'm going to leave you with this. If you can get this embedded to work, it's really cool because then you could give the, um, sky a transparency and you can actually make elements kind of look like they're like singularly embedded in your pages. So that's really what this is meant for. And when done well, it's rad. But like I said, it's really simple. It's literally just this keyword. But I am i don't know if it's a glitch issue. I'm just not able to get it to run right now. So I'll let y'all kind of mess with that if you'd like. I'll also link um, some other code examples. But we're going to jump straight to iframes, OK? So iframes is just a regular, um, regular HTML concept. It pretty much allows you to just put a um a web page inside of another web page so i'm going to be showing you all this with um just this like little example app that i'm building for web 2 because i know some of y'all want to do integration with both of those projects a lot of you do actually okay so i'm going to be using um the glitch as my sort of like welcoming screen okay and so I'm going to show you how you can sort of like layer HTML elements on top of an A-frame and sort of have all of these different, um, different things functioning together. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is I'm going to go in this page and I'm going to go at the top of the page. And uh, this one, this is actually my um, animation, but I just have hidden that for the time being. So I'm just going to call the iframe component. Um, and we're going to be using Z index. So let's just look up the I. Oh, here we go. Is this? No, that's not iframe. Okay. So the iframe component, it's pretty much just this. The tag is iframe. And then you just do a search and you put the URL. You can put any URL. Uh, it's, so it's just going to embed it in our page. So let's do iframe. And inside of the opening tag, we will go ahead and put SRC as the attribute. And then I'm going to grab the output from, this is just a really, really basic page here. Oh, wait, I was, let me unbreak this. Everything's broken. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to um, copy and paste this outcome page. And then I'm going to put that, that's what's actually going to go inside of, so there's my iframe right there. But now I'm going to actually put it inside here, like so. OK, so I think, um, I'm gonna, have I given it some iframe style yet? OK, no, so I haven't given any iframe style. So one, uh, we have to do a couple other things. So um, especially according to this page, it's suggesting that you do allow VR and allow full screen, yes. So I'll go back to the HTML element, and I'll put those as attributes in this opening tag as well. Okay, so now we want to, we should, there's no reason why that should be white the way it is. Um, but what we're gonna do, and maybe we can just look at it, maybe we look at it larger. Okay, so yeah, okay, so here's what's happening. Um, you're only able to see it in that way because we just have some um, on the iPhone here. We're only, that is actually really weird. Let's just look at it here. Never mind. Okay. So it's not showing up on this page because we just need to work with our, our Z index. Okay. So um, what we can do is let's just check that the iframe showing up. So here's our iframe. Okay. It's over here. And so what I'm going to do is screen two, which is the, the div that holds everything below it, this part, all these parts. Um, I'm going to give those a Z index of negative one. 
and that's going to allow me to bring this to the front. So let's go ahead and put a negative one Z index because that means it's just going to send everything like it means just go to the back. So I'm going to target screen two on the CSS. Screen two and I'm going to give it that negative Z index and it's not really going to change anything about that whole container. It's just going to allow us to put everything else on the page in front of it. Okay, so that's what's happening here. And then that should render out on mobile too. Okay, great. So now what we need to do is we need to style the, um, the actual A-frame. So, or sorry, the I-frame. So I'll just do I-frame up at the top. And we can just do I-frame. You could give it an ID. You could wrap it in a container. Um, but it doesn't, you do need to actually affect the I-frame itself. And so let's give it a width of 100 VW and maybe a height. Of, let's see how big are my pages so a height of like 320 which is probably a little too big but that's okay for now oops okay so now I have this full page functionality and then obviously you know if so if this was your project right like you might want to change your camera make things smaller right like so and by your project I mean like I might recommend if, if you're going to do the um, combine one, I might just build the opening screen that you want as an A-frame exactly how you want it. And then, you know, when you look at it on whatever size screen as an A-frame, it may change what you're trying to do. And then the only other thing that I want to get rid of here is uh, I-frame already comes with, I'm confusing I-frame and A-frame a lot, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I-frame, HTML thing, well, they're both HTML. Um, we don't we don't want a border on that it natively comes with a border so let's just say border none okay cool and so what we can do with this obviously um when we work with that iframe is then we can also layer other pieces of html css animations anything on top of that so um maybe what we want to do okay so let's pretend like this is like a cool thing you should still be able to interact with it Mm. That's a little bit of a bummer. That oh, that might be a mobile thing. Let's see. Well, now I can't see shit. Let's get it out of. Let's just get it out of responsive altogether. Where's my cursor? Hmm. Okay, Robbie, these are notes for you. Don't show any of the stuff with the small screen. Just show iPhone, maybe. Okay, so. We got this embedded. Um, our functionality isn't running exactly how I would want it to, um, but I think we'll just move on from here. Okay, so once we have it embedded, you can kind of move around and like, you know, you can have your animations happening in here. This one, this is like obviously kind of a lame example, but let's pretend like this is like a cool 3D squiggly animation, okay? You can also, at this point, you can then put, um, HTML on top of it, right? So maybe we do something like, um, oh my goodness, uh, let's do a um, button. I think I have a button styled and it could say enter the experience. I don't know, or your app name. I don't know how to spell experience. Let's just do enter. Okay. Um, and okay, so what, a couple other things, we'll, we'll make that pop up, but right now also what's happening is that we just have this one long roll. So obviously you would wanna set, um, you'd wanna set your main screen to hide 
in the JS, right? So like for instance, screen one, screen two, screen three, hide, screen two, delay. Okay, so I'm just gonna um I'm gonna take I'm gonna just get rid of this so I can just hide my whole screen two so that I don't have that content underneath there. Okay, so I'm just hiding that now. Um, all right, so this enter button, um, I thought I had a button on this page. That's why I did that. What's it called? Ah, okay. I'm just going to give this button. Um, no, hang on. I'll just style it. Y'all, sorry. Okay. So let's just give this um, an ID. Just so, just to keep it easy, uh, I'm just gonna name it Go. Let's go to CSS. We'll do Go. We'll do position absolute. Um, I don't know, border two pixels solid white. Oh, this is ID, my bad. Okay. Okay, so now we have our enter on top. Let's pretend like this enter is like a really nicely styled CSS animation or something. Uh, I trust y'all to do way cooler stuff than I'm doing right now. Um, okay, so what we can do now is now we can use this as a target to then animate this. So I'll use go. I'll go in the JS and I'm going to target go. Oops. As my jQuery object. So this should be go. That's okay, so that'll be a click. So when I click on go, I'm gonna call a function. And then I'm gonna do some stuff. So um, I mean the, the most basic we can do obviously is just that iframe. We could target the iframe itself. So we can say, um, iframe, we don't need any punctuation. Uh, we could just do like a fade out. Okay. So when I click on this enter button, it'll fade out that animation. And then obviously I would also want to, um, show my screen too then. All right, so click enter. Boom, okay. And then obviously I would want to, um, I would want to hide that button as well. Um, and I think I'm clicking something else that's clickable here, that's, that's refreshed, like um, another clickable object that's behind this. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That's all good. All right. So, and then obviously you would, you would like also do for this fade out, you know, you would do hashtag go as well, just to get that to both of those to fade out. Okay. You can also do things like you can call, um, instead of fade out, a couple other things that we can talk about are, um, oh my God. It's late. Animate uh, P five JS. Oh no, not P five, y'all. jQuery. Okay, so this is the animate method from jQuery. You can perform a custom set of CSS properties. Um, the syntax is like a little bit confusing, but like for instance, you can do stuff. Um, here, let's. 
Let's just grab an example. So like for instance, we can um, like trigger a custom animation. So um, in this example, I'll just copy this whole thing over to the JS just because I like to make sure that I have the correct syntax. You know, I can do my little highlights here. Okay, so here's, great. So this is gonna be the whole animate here, right? Okay, so we can call, you know, instead of fade out, right? I could call animate, so dot animate gets a parameter, we'll throw that after it, okay? And then um, inside of that, it gets a block, no function, just a block, okay? Um, so then in here, I'm going to do this left. Okay, plus equals to add this number of pixels to whatever its position is. So I can put, um, let's say, 200 pixels on the end there, okay? Um, and then you can, after this bracket here, wait, I might have this wrong. Let me clean this up. I'm just gonna copy, I'm gonna copy this whole thing here, because this is actually the whole animation, like so. Okay, whoops. And I'll leave opacity. I don't want this. And then no comma after the last property value pair, okay? And then um, what's nice about this little template is that this actually has a function baked into it. So what we can do is we can say, okay, this is gonna happen for five seconds. We'll make ours like two seconds. And then after that completes, we can make something else happen. So the after would be uh, maybe you want to show that. that that's not maybe exactly you know the the right sequence of events but let's just run that uh, and then let's increase this by like 500 so the plus equals will add this number to whatever its position currently is so on that click function this animate should happen hmm oh okay well left isn't going to work because we don't have a left property on we don't have a currently have a left property on our iframe so let's go back to our iframe and let's say position absolute and let's say left zero let's see what that looks like Okay, and then let's just put our our button friend because we need to like, let's put that, this button here. Why did I put in a div? I didn't need to do that. I just needed a button. Um, let's put that after. Let's see if we can get that to show up on top of the iframe. Because I, I did this as position absolute, so that's why it kind of took precedent over this button. So it's just an order thing. Okay, cool. Otherwise, we could do a z-index. So this should animate, and then this will happen. So that's like a really nice way for you to have that order of operations. And we can break down the syntax a little bit because I didn't do a very good job of that. So again, just to reiterate what's happening, um, this left, you could also do right, you could do top, you could do side, you could do rotation. Anything that you can do with CSS, you could put in a, a jQuery animation. And then this part down here, okay, um, this is for, so there's a couple different types of, of animations. Um, let me get rid of this one. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's from that. You don't need this additional function in there. So like you don't need this. So let's take a look at one or two other animations. I need to grab my charger. So I just want to grab a really simple one. Okay, 
So here's a, here's a pretty simple example. Um, here's the whole animate function. It looks like this, okay? Um, so let's just copy this in and let's break down the, um, let's break down what we're, what we're seeing here, okay? So obviously that won't make any sense. So here's how I would break it down, okay? You're gonna do dot animate. I always do that first. And then it definitely is going to get a block inside of it, no function, okay? Then you're gonna do your properties and values. So, you know, we can do um, like any, any type of CSS, like literally just CSS. You could do transform, rotation, um, background color, you know, any of that stuff, right? So you can have like a really interesting animation. So you would put those in here and you could put as many as you would, you want, like so, but the last one gets no comma, okay? And then if you would like to say what time, like how long you want that to take, like we can for other animations, all you do is at the, at the last property and value pair, you, um, Oh no, sorry, not the last property value pair, on the other side of the block, right? So the block, the property and value should be in there. So the block is for your CSS, which makes sense, right? This is literally CSS, okay? And then you just do a comma after the second block, and then you put your timing function in there. So you could do slow, you could do fast, um, or you could put, you know, 200, which would be two seconds, okay? So let's just throw a thing here, just so this doesn't look like it's broken. And we're just looking at this thing here. Okay, so then if you wanted to add a function, okay, if you wanted to say, okay, I want this thing to animate, and then I want something else to happen, because if you just stack two things um, next to each other inside of a function, they'll, like, sorry, right on top of each other, they'll happen at the same time. So this is how you can introduce order of operation. So you can say, um, Right on the other side of the timing function, we can put um, another comma and just do our function and then our function um, syntax, okay? And so that's that crazy looking thing, all right? That's, that's actually what we're looking at um, for your, the full animation, okay? This one's in a click function, that's why it has this extra set of block, blocks. So I would highly encourage you to just sort of like break it down like that, like I just did, um, if you ever get confused. And then so inside of this function, you know, you could do what we did here, right? Like a show, you know, wait five seconds, and then show this thing, okay? So that's how you can just sort of control your order of operations. And then like I said, we can do anything in this animate that we can do in... Um, in HTML, you know, so we have opacity, um, I don't know, some other things you could do, you know, any anything that you're working with, you could just throw, you know, change the border, rotate it, all those different things. So if you want like a really, really specific interaction, um, that's how you would do that. And I will follow up on that just a bit later. So just to reiterate, um, what is happening? Oh, let me get rid of this. I think that might be, that's, that might be mad at me. Yeah, it was very mad at me. Okay. So again, this is our click function. It's calling. So this is an iframe. I can position it wherever I want. Um, you should still have your functionality. I'm having some, a little bit of issues with that right now, but, uh, those are some things we could talk about in your individual meetings this week, just how to get those things to run properly. Um, and then what I did was I have a, um, a button that triggers, an animation on this iframe. Okay, and then my main screen pops in. Um, you know, some other things that we can, yeah, actually, you know what, I think I'll stop it there.